What's going on guys? Come back at you. This is Steph from KS Diesel. Um, this is gonna be a new review on the new Joying 10.1 uh, inch Android based head unit. Um, this head unit also has the brand new Joying screens that they just came out with, which has a really high HD resolution. It's uh, buttonless, so there's no buttons. Uh, so it's a nice display. No logos, so if you want to remain anonymous for the brand that you're running in your car, this is the new screen. So this is a 12 by 80 by 800 screen. So it is beautiful. Much, much, much more thinner than the other one. As you can tell, this is the thinner screen. It looks like they utilize the same designs for the mounting, which is great because I do my own thing with this mounting in my vehicle. So. This is awesome. Uses the same ID cord for the screens. Never had a problem with them myself, so it's good cord, good system. So this is how slick the screen looks. Probably got my fingerprints on there now. So aside from the screen, uh, they've done major upgrades on the units themselves. From the first Intel-based Android head unit, they actually had the Intel uh, quad core. Um, now this is the octa core, so it is eight cores at 1.8 G, um, 64 bits high performance processor, running Android 10. So this is a uh, big uh, two versions of an upgrade. The other ones are running eight. So this is much much better. There's also Bluetooth 5.1 for better enhanced sound quality. Um, I was browsing the settings in this unit and it had uh, transfer rates up to, I think, 990 kilo, kilobytes per second. So on Bluetooth, that's like unreal. So sound quality, no more issues with these units now. So they're just blowing everybody out in the water, trying to be up to par with technology. Um, and they also did a huge addition it is now optical output. So not only the coaxial output as they had here in the first Intel based head units, they actually have an optical output. So now you even have higher res sound quality at 96 kilohertz. So that's what they claim that's gonna output. Um, we're gonna do some tests to see how high is the bit rate that comes out of this thing. And uh, yeah, um, it also has a 32 band equalizer DSP you can independently do your EQ for your front stage and then your EQ for your rear speakers um, it has time alignment so uh, you can set your distances on four speakers um, bass enhancement devices and stuff like that so we're gonna dive into this thing um, real soon here uh, the other thing I'd like to add to it is that this particular unit has the um, ability to have 4G so 4G data so if you want to hook up to those cell towers using a sim card a sim card slot here um, what comes in the box is your harness that plugs into behind the head unit you have a mic so microphone two USB extension cords which is great because the first one they had these built into the unit, so they were part of the unit. So if you ever had to take this box out, it was unfish it out of your dash, fish it back in, it was a pain in the ass. So, so I'm really glad they did that. I just wish they were a little longer because three feet is kind of short. Five or five feet would have been nice. Some people put them in their glove box. I myself run it through my center console, so this is too short, so I'm gonna have to get them longer. So there's that. So you have your 4G primary antenna. And then they have another antenna here. I don't know what the plans is with this. Is maybe it's a dual band or something, but it looks like they have two 4G slots. They don't really have much detail on it either on their on their website. But uh, they have future plans for this unit as well. So this is a a unit with great features, but uh, I've been told that they're going to come out with firmware updates and then it's going to move on more added features to this model. So 
Um, they have a GPS antenna. And then here, they actually have 5G Wi-Fi. So 5G Wi-Fi antenna, Bluetooth antenna, and 2.4G Wi-Fi antenna. And then they also have your CAN bus out, CAN bus in, IR for remote. Um, and then keys if you're old school with the resistant, resistance sensitive steering wheel keys. Um, so they have that dual USB. Yeah, optical output, coaxial output, video in, um, audio in, pre outs for your rears, pre outs for your front, subwoofer out. Still only one jack for the subwoofer. I really wish they'd move on to dual like all the other big name brands out there. So you're stuck using that fancy RCA Y connector. So. so that's the optical transceiver. Right there in that corner. It looks like they just wired it. It's probably just power, ground, and then digital. Looks like either that's the Wi-Fi chip or the Bluetooth chip. An extra spare port there. Not sure what that does. They finally, that's the CAN bus connector back here for all the off-board CAN. Very slick. And another thing, I, I just don't understand why they haven't tried putting fans in here yet. Very, they make ultra quiet fans. Like what's it to them to put a, you know, a, a little fan to just keep the air moving in these things. I know my Intel got like super hot, but it never gave me any issues. There's the amplifier. There's a, Good amount of paste on that amplifier for thermal. And it just pretty much gets pasted here to this aluminum channel plate. So the heat just dissipates on that. This would be the processor, GPU, all that stuff under there. Looks much rather simple. Show the back again. I'm hoping they eventually do dual Bluetooth. That would be really nice. Apparently this unit is ready for a bunch of mods and they just have to give you a firmware to do it all. So hopefully they come up with something. So this is what's in the box. So um, we'll hook this all up and we'll get it fired up. We're gonna do a boot up from a cold boot. Uh, that essentially means the processor hasn't booted up yet and it's not just booting up on key on power. So let's do that. And essentially, you'll get to see how quick it is on boot up time, which is surprisingly unbelievable. So pretend you just did your key on. And this is a cold boot, so. And it's already up. So for an Android head unit, that's really fast for a cold boot. Essentially, we also have CarPlay, which I cannot do right now because I have my phone on videotaping. Um, so we'll save the best for last. Oh, would you look at that? 
I can car play and take a video. Sweet. So essentially you have your car play and it's wireless. So right now my phone's on the bench. There's nothing hooked up to this unit. It just connects that fast wirelessly. So um, from a cold boot too. The Intel unit was Z-Link and it was not stable. I had really bad sound. Um, sometimes when I drive through um, crowded areas in, in the city, the sound would skip because there was interference. And at once, at one time I had the older iPhone, which was the iPhone seven. And it just skipped all the time because it's like the, the transfer rate over Wi-Fi wasn't quick enough. But as soon as you, I went to my new phone, which is the iPhone 11 pro, it was fine. So the old Intel unit had a lot of issues with the Apple CarPlay. So now we've moved along to something that's just surprisingly unreal. Now, before this video, I've done CarPlay testing myself. And for the range, I went up 60 feet away from the head unit playing music. Um, sound was so crystal clear, still played music without a problem. So connections are not an issue anymore. So right now we're hooked up to this Behringer Ultra Curve Pro. Um, this is a DEQ2496. Most, most of you um, sound quality guys out there should know what this unit's about. This unit is, a, is pretty much the best DJ or equalizer, you could say, uh, available for um, digital mastering processing. So essentially the reason why I have this beside here, beside a car audio unit, is because I can see sample rate. So right now it looks on optical, we only have 48 kilohertz of sample rate. So it's not 96 kilohertz, it's 48. Still a little low, don't know what the bit transfer is, if it's, uh, you know, 24 or something like that. But kilohertz wise, we have 48. Um, the same thing for coax. I have the coaxial hooked up to my home theater receiver here in my shop. I have 14 in ceiling speakers and two 15 inch uh, subs in here in my shop at each corner of the shop. And it's a 30 by 60 shop. So it's about uh, 17, 1800 square feet and it gets pretty gnarly loud in here. So so I got the coax hooked up to that thing and that thing detects uh, sample rate as well. So, um, so this is the CarPlay. It does pretty much commands the, the microphone. So I'm not gonna do just in case it interrupts my video feed here. So you guys can check that out shortly after this. So here we have the um, home screen. I'm going to zoom in here. So this is the home screen. This screen, I, like you can tell you right now from the Intel unit, the old 10.1. I think that one wasn't even that big of a deal. I think it was still 1280 by 720. Um, I don't know what makes this thing just pop. Uh, I think it was actually 600, the old one. 1280 by 600. This thing just popped. You can tell immediately there's a huge difference in pixelation. It's so much more smooth. It's so much, just the lighting is, is so much nicer on this screen. Um, myself, I love the screen. I'm, you know, I, I've been complaining except for once. One complaint I have about the screen is that there's no buttons. I'm a button guy. I like knobs. I like turn down the volume with a, a knob. Um, but they do have multiple screen selections for these units. I believe they have a nine and a 10 and an eight, so. Let's see here real quickly.
So Joeing has a few plans uh, to come out with different screens. They're in the process of uh, reworking their screen layout to possibly add buttons in the future. So this is not the only screen available. Therefore, um, just keep an eye out on their website. They're gonna come out with something that's gonna be uh, universal that you can uh, set up this radio differently to your taste. I'm pretty sure they had the uh, seven, eight, and nine, and then one of them are gonna be buttons for volume knobs. I remember there was volume knobs and one up here, but I really hope that they don't go through with that design. They put them down here because it's really crappy if you're going to the top of the screen in your vehicle, like my screen's high in my vehicle. I don't want to reach on top of the screen to volume knob it. I want the bottom of the screen, right? So I really hope they focus on a design for a screen with rotary buttons that is large. That'd be every Cario's boy's dream. Anyways, moving on, we have Bluetooth music. So my phone is connected uh, right now uh, with CarPlay in the background. So we're not connected on here. So I renamed this device to my truck, pairing password. You can link all your contacts as well. So Bluetooth is the 5.1 Bluetooth, as I said in the introduction. Um, video player. So it's got the video closed for my driving. So let's change that while we're in here. So the video is really, really nice. So I blocked out the audio just because I don't want to get any uh, protection, uh, copyright protection for audio. So this is Florida Georgia Line. I don't, I'm not really a music video kind of guy, just two random videos that are on my USB drive. Um, operational guides, so they have all the operational guide it's pretty much uh, full instruction uh, for your radio, but on the radio. So you don't have to flip to a manual and just keep paper around. So Bluetooth tells you how to do it all, how to use it, how it works. Basic operation tells you how basic operation of the unit, main interface, it tells you everything about your main interface. There's widgets, steering wheel functions, how to save, how to set it all up. Any questions, it's all in here, guys. There's no more guesswork. So the car. Car settings. There's also, when you buy your CAN bus adapter for your vehicle on this machine, most of the time it doesn't does not come set up. So you do have to set up your CAN bus or else your steering wheel controls will not work. And in order to set up your CAN bus, Make sure you, uh, I'm pretty sure it is factory. Password for all joining unit settings is 3368. So here's your CAN bus car model. So my box, you'll get a box type. You select your box type. Um, try a few of them. Some of them are hit and miss. So mine's a Chrysler, even though it's in a ramp 1500 pickup. And then uh, BG is my box type. You can change your boot logo. So when you boot, it comes as a Chevy, Android, Mercedes, Honda, Subaru, all that. And widgets too, right? So your widgets, you can drag and move your widgets around. And if you want to create more widgets, um, I can add this to the home screen, but right now it's full. So there's so many things you can do with this. You can even change your car launcher. In the settings, it allows you to change your car launcher. Um, there's a mirroring, they have screen mirroring. So if you want to do easy connection, you can do mirroring. Steering wheel controls, this is pretty much your steering wheel controls. If you're CAN bus, you do not have to program them. They're automatically programmed. 
But if you are resistant, resistance sensitive steering wheel controls, you'll be pressing that up key, hitting that button, and then pressing OK. You got the equalizer. So this is the equalizer I was talking about. Let's see if we good zoom on that. So this is the equalizer we're talking about. Um, you can pretty much set this for all up here. So this is doing all four speakers. Or you can go setups and do front and, and rear independently. Now, how you switch between your front left, front right EQ to your rear left, rear light, right, you just slide over the screen like you just seen me do. So you just slide it over, and that is front to back. I just keep it on one because I just have a front stage in my truck, so I don't need to. And I also have an external DSP with my optical digital output. So I don't use the EQ. It does work. Um, some songs I do tweak it a little bit if I have to. And then I just go back to standard when I just keep my standard or to user the odd song. Um, surround, this is your time alignment. They call it surround space. So these distances are in centimeters. Um, I found on the Intel units that <clears throat> the slightest difference would make the sound stage move so easily. I didn't really have to put the ac actual measurement in here. I just did it by ear. So and you can you can tell like you can literally hear the voice of the musician where you're listening to rock, country. Or any any band you could you're able to tell oh it, he's, you can hear him on this side of the vehicle now oh you can hear him over here okay now let's tweak these and then you can hear him like right in front of you and it was that great and it just raised the um, all the sound from below the vehicle it pretty much raised it up so you were having that direct sound with you so this is huge um, this it really helps clean up sound and then they say rear horn surround strength. So this adds to the mid-range and tweeters. If you want to add a little more back in to the front stage, you can uh, add it. Um, unfortunately, this surround space does not work with the optical and coaxial output. Um, it's really unfortunate because the other join with the Intel, it did work. So, um, it was really nice to have this working. So I really hope that they fix that and they make the surround space work with the optical and coaxial output. It's really important. Um, bass enhancement. This essentially, if you want to enhance certain frequency, you can do so by 12 dB. You just pick out your frequency, so 68 Hertz, and then you just start enhancing it. And this is for the, this would be for the front stage, this would be for the rear stage. So you can get to go up to 214, to 172, 134, 108, 86, all the way down to 54. So I've never used it, don't care about using it. So uh, your field, left, right, front, back. So this is your fader, essentially. This is not listening position. They seem to have this a little bit mixed up with listening position, but it's not. So essentially, this is your left, this is your right. So on the Intel unit, um, I was really happy because they had this working right side, left side. So you're able to balance left to right because the 2.0 system uh, digitally, uh, you're able to do fading. But this one, it is still stereo, it's not mono, and I've, I have tested it out. I played a, uh, a track that goes left speaker, right speaker, left, right. It tests the, the sound from left to right, and it does switch. But I can't go left and right on here for sound. I'm pretty sure that's the reason why the surround space doesn't work. So maybe they can fix that as well. So your base filters, this is pretty much your high pass filter for your front stage and your rear stage. So if you want to filter out a frequency so your speakers don't see some of that nasty 
low frequency bass when you have subwoofers, you can easily filter these however you want it. Um, so that's the equalizer portion of things. And then you do have loudness, loudness, everybody loves loudness. Um, because the screen has no buttons, this is one thing to keep in consideration. If you do have steering wheel controls, you're golden. Your passenger ain't so much. The, issue, the way, a reason why I say that is because you always have to click the volume here in order to slide the volume down. Now, if you don't have steering wheel controls, now you're gonna hate yourself because on CarPlay, you don't see this bar. So on CarLink, so see, bar's gone, whoop you do. But every time you want to turn down the volume and you don't have steering wheel controls or your passenger's trying to do it, they have to swipe it down and get that bar showing. Um, I personally reached out to Johnny and I told him, hey, keep the bar showing all the time or add the volume knob here. Um, that would be a really nice addition if they could do that. But um, I don't think they're looking to make any uh, rational changes right now to the firmware until people start speaking up about it. So. All right, guys. So we have this set up for our subwoofer pre-out test on 40 kilohertz test tone. So just to show you guys, we have loudness off, equalizers flat. Um, we have our 40 hertz test tone at zero dB. We have our subwoofer maxed out. Our subwoofer frequencies being filtered at 250. And I have, we'll go full range on that. We'll go full range. So we got full range on subwoofer high and low. Um, fire up this test tone, zero dB, 40 Hertz. Let's see what our voltage pre-out is. So at maximum pre-out voltage, we have a nice non squared wave so we have a nice analog wave there as you can see no sharp points on the scope um, 1.7 volts 1.75 so almost two volt pre-out which is way better than what was before the old in, uh, intel joining head unit was i think 0.5 so they've done an improvement here so really impressed Let's see if one day they can get up to four. Four volts would be something to hear about. Some to see and some to enjoy. Some of you are using line drivers to bump this voltage up even higher. That's great. Um, most amplifiers nowadays, the input gains for the voltage range from six to, I think, 0.2. So 200 millivolts on a max gain knob. So you'd have this almost a little bit more than half on your amplifier gain you knob, which is not a big deal. Um, so yeah, so that's the subwoofer output at 40 Hertz dB. Um, because we put this on full range to see if we have 500 Hertz. So we have 500 Hertz here. Stretch out this phasing, nice and still. No square, no square peaks, no sharp, nothing's, everything's mint. 500 hertz, zero dB, subwoofer for output. 1.6 volts in the multimeter. I'll round that off. Um, so yeah, we can add loudness, there's no effect on the wave, no effect on the voltage. You can even max these out. No effect on anything. So they have this unit really well for clipping. So what about bass enhancement? We never tried this. 
this is for front speakers. It's not for the sub. Okay. All right, so we're gonna move on to uh, front speakers now, front speaker pre-outs, and we'll see how many, how much volts pre-outs we get, and if we get any clipping. All right, so now we're back. We are on the front right pre-out. So only doing one RCA. We have 1.58 at full volume. Um, doesn't seem like we have any sharp. Nothing sharp, it looks good. No clip, no clipping, so. Now let's move on to something a little more in the higher range. We'll do 3500 hertz at zero dB. So right now we have 1.48 volts, so one and a half on the front right pre-out. Uh, so that's pretty good. Seems like our test, this is at 55 hertz, 500 hertz. So if we brought this up, we are not getting any more any more voltage nothing's changed um, if we add loudness no clipping nothing's changing which is great let's try 5000 Hertz 0 dB Four eight two. No clipping, looks good still. Loudness, no clipping. Nothing's changing. So, volume down. Nice and linear, as it seems. Um, see if we have anything higher than 5,000. Well, that's it. So now we're gonna unplug and we're gonna hook up to the rear RC pre to see if we get the same results. We got the front speaker high level outputs hooked up now. Um, I believe it is the gray pair, so this would be the right side. We're gonna test this on a 3500 hertz zero dB test track. Um, we're gonna see if we can yield the same results as the rear speakers. So the track just restarted. So we'll put out our magic number 31. See if we get clipping here. Doesn't seem like we're getting any clipping at all. 31. How about 32? 32, you know, getting some clipping. 33, clipping, 34, 35, 36, and just solid clip. 31 is still your magic number. 
for the front speakers. So that's good that everything's even across the chart. Um, personally, I think in my Volkswagen, I didn't have it higher than uh, 28, 29 on some certain songs that were recorded a little lower volume nut level. Other than that, I always had a 25 and I was running my speakers off the internal amplifier of this thing and they sounded fantastic. I didn't have one complaint. There was no noise, no hissing, none of that. It just worked like a gem. Um, other than that, this is pretty much ends the test here. Um, we covered the digital optical output. We did find a very low sample rate on that. We found rough at 48. So not something that we're too impressed about, but it's still better than, than something. Maybe it's just um, a configuration that they need to change in the firmware. Um, if they change that configuration, so we can sample out 96 kilohertz on the optical digital output and the coax output, that'd be great. Other than that, it still works for what I need to do, essentially um, in my truck, going to my DSP, uh, as long as I have better than CD quality, I'm happy with it. Um, RCAs do have noise in them, just depending where you're running them in the vehicle. So there's more chance of not having the quality there like digital would have. Um, nice to keep your DSP in your vehicle close to your amplifier. That way your short runs on your RCA side of things, that way you don't get noise. Shorter the runs, the better. Um, Pretty much everybody's different with their car audio installation. I'm very uh, anal and picky about that. So um, yeah, so this pretty much sums up our test for this joint head unit. I hope you liked the review. Um, we're always out here trying to help uh, people understand what they're getting hardware wise because there's not a lot of uh, people doing testing like this on these units. Uh, Joying seems to really enjoy the hard work and pride we put into doing these tests to assure their quality that they've put out for their products. So um, this will be a shout out to Joying. Thank you for letting us have this unit for a demo and helping with this review video. Other than that, there's a few little things that should be ironed out on this unit. Um, very simple things. And I think a big one that everybody wants is a second, second Bluetooth chip um, because people want to be able to connect uh, over Bluetooth external devices. So having multiple Bluetooth connections um, or even making uh, USB Bluetooth adapters um, allowed to be recognized on these units, um, slide in a USB Bluetooth dongle and then you could run a second Bluetooth chip. Um, other than that, the volume on these non-keyed paneling, it's nice to do it here because it's easy, but once you're in CarPlay mode, it's a different story. All right, we're back and we're hooked up to the rear RCA pre-outs. It seems, let's see what kind of voltage we get out of this guy. Volume is maxed out at 36. So we're getting surprising less on the rear Prios. We investigate why that is. This rear horn has something to do for what it, there it is. There's the clipping I want to see. So this rear horn on the surround space enhances the rear channel get you that rear channel because your ears are pointing to the front. So it gives you more. Um, if you turn this off, you only get 1.482, which is norm. Same as the front, we turn that on. We can actually get more voltage. Look at that, 2.446, but we're clipping hard here. So if we turn this down, So right about there, we can squeeze 1.86 before clipping. But because the volume is more linear, see if we can crank this up to here. There's 
Stir this try. So we got some clipping there. Very little. You can just tell she's off and we got two volts. So I think anything at two volts in this unit, you will get clipping. So just keep that in mind. If you want to boost your, your voltage, you just get a, definitely get a line driver. Not worth the risk to your speakers. So that's with the rear horn boost in the surround. So that's 5 dB. Um, Right, we turn it off, we're just going back down to 1.5, 1.48. So, just don't use that rear horn boost and you'll be fine. Or keep it up below 4 dB if you need a little bit of a boost and you won't get any clipping. Loudness doesn't do anything to the rear. That's good. You can boost your EQ up. No clipping. Bass enhancement. Let's check this out. So this is the rear speakers. I don't have a f any test tones for this. Let's see if we get any clipping through this bass enhancement. So I got 40 hertz and zero dB. I'll run this, then I'll boost 52 because this probably rolls off. Oh, I do have, there you go, 150 hertz. 0 dB, you can boost this. Uh, bass enhancement, 172. There's the booster. So now we've got clip in here. So we're doing a boost of 172 on 150 hertz test tone. We've got two and a half volts of pre-out voltage, and we are still distorting here. So right about there is where you get a perfectly round wave, and you have no distortion, volume of the head unit's full. RCA pre-out voltage is two volts. So like I said before, um, anything about over two volts in this head unit, you start to clip. So keep it under two volts and you'll be fine. Um, that being said, it would be the same results for the front if you were to use the base booster. Keep it under 2 dB, 1, 2, 3. Um, yeah. Essentially, I don't use this, so I keep them off. So that pretty much sums up the RC pre-out testing. We're going to move on to high voltage for the speaker outputs. High voltage analog. Getting tired here. Um, and we're going to test that out, prove that out, and see what we can find for clipping or distortion on that. Oh, we will be testing uh, rear speaker. This is going to be on the internal amplifier, which is sometimes we get different mixed results with the, these tests because um, they'll change the internal amplifier to different specs. Uh, these Android units are all hit and miss. So I'm curious to see what kind of results we get on this internal amplifier. So we're going to repeat 
this one all at all time. So we currently have 1.3 volts of output. So we do start clipping around 31 is the magic number. So at 31 we have no flip and we have seven volts of output. So that's pretty good. You know, at the end of the day, if you guys are looking to get more RCA output voltage, you guys can probably get away with using the speaker level input outputs and just hook up RCAs. Get yourself on some nice RCN, solder them, get a twisted pair, run them to the head unit. There's your RCA outputs. You want high voltage? Same goddamn thing. It's AC. So we got uh, 3.4 volts at volume 24. So that's pretty good. So the average uh, guy is gonna, you know, run the head unit's volume about 75% of the way up there, right? So say we have that 27, look at that. 27, you got 4.8 volts. Imagine that for voltage pre-outs. That can be easily turned into RCA pre-outs. So um, now let's check out if we add loudness. So loudness does not seem to do anything. Tracks restarting. Uh, at volume 27, about 19. So around 19, loudness does something to the voltage pre-out. You probably cut it off at like 20, 22. So we're still using a loudness at 23, 22. Loudness at 24. 26, we're not using loudness. 25. 24 is the magic number for loudness. They stop using loudness after 24, which is good in a way because then you get that more natural sound. If you want to leave it on, you could leave it on at lower volumes. Then as soon as you pass, you know, 24 and you hit volume number 25, loudness is off automatically. So you don't have to worry about it um, converting sound, adding more bass, or doing funky things to your music, right? You, you know you have quality sound at 25. So, um, so that's good. Now let's move on to uh, a higher test tone. So we had a magic number of 31 and we had no distortion. Do 3500 hertz. Five hundred hertz, and we will bring up the volume level. Thirty-one. Look at that. Not clipping yet. Thirty-one. No clip. Thirty-two. I'm clipping yet at 32 either. 33, I'm clipping for sure. I would keep 31 the magic number for this as well. Wouldn't want to risk it. Clip free at 31. Loudness doesn't do anything. Um, because we're on the rear horn, let's check out what. Um, 
this surround rear horn enhancement will do. So just turning this on, because the rear horn's a five, it raised it and started distorting. As soon as you touch it, because I'm already on borderline 31, right? Um, default rear horn is actually below zero. So they actually have this turned down. But if you just put at zero to match the fronts, um, you get the same, you yield the same results. 31 is your magic number for your volume. Uh, essentially, good old meters getting tired. If you do want the rear to be more powerful, you can put it to five, but your magic number for your volume changes. So now your magic number is 27. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and test the front speaker outputs. All right, so this is the joining head unit. We're gonna do a key on. That's how fast the boot time is on this thing. It's pretty intense. And then car link. And that's it. So this is the in-vehicle install. I'll show you guys. Very slim. It actually fits a little bit better than my last unit. It, the screen, uh, my old screen, it would hide my, uh, half of my controls here. It was probably about down to here, so I couldn't see the, the writing on my controls. So this new screen, is really nice much clearer in definition um, and then it's the same release ribbon and then you just pop her in swiping is actually super smooth on here like you could it'll keep up And the sound's actually super smooth in here because I do have a three-way front stage setup. So tweeters, mid mid range, mid bass, and then I have uh, audio control DSP uh, six oh eight down there. So I'm feeding digital optical to that, and uh, yeah, the sound's never been better. Definitely a huge improvement. So. But you can uh, see where, for example, let's end route. So if I want to make a route, see this is about, just to show you how quick it is, how smooth and responsive it is.
and it doesn't skip a beat. Which is actually pretty good for a wireless CarPlay because um, it's wireless. Just using the uh, Wi-Fi card in here to the hotspot card on the phone. Never opened Sirius XM before, so. And it actually opened it pretty fast. My other uh, Intel based drawing took some time, so. So that's actually really fast. Huh, okay. Uh, phone, you got your keypad. Voicemail, contacts, recents, favorites. Uh, what else can I show you guys? I've never used TuneIn Radio before, so I don't know how fast this is going to be. Not bad at all. Local radio. Super fast, so Let's see what it does. Random. When you drive a little less, every ride feels pretty, a little more. It's pretty fast, I'll tell you that. Settings, I've never been in here either. Okay. So, so that's pretty much what it looks like. This is the clean look that it, it gives you. Turn the key off. And then if you are setting up for CAN bus, which I can show you. Uh, oh, and the only thing I don't like about this unit is that the volume. So it's nice that I have steering wheel controls, but if you actually don't have steering wheel controls in the vehicle and you're buying this display, it's really great. If you are using CarPlay, the only thing that you have to swipe down, press the volume, and then you could adjust the volume um, that's my only little pet peeve about this thing um, which is my steering wheel controls I always use them so it's not a big deal in this vehicle but uh, if you're in another vehicle it, it might you know be bothersome for some people but that's like and the home button like everything's on the status bar right so if you're in anything else the bar is always there it's only CarPlay or Android Auto that this is going to be of effect so and then if you like you've seen before that's the dsp stuff remember there's a power button here to turn the sound space on and the measurements are in centimeters so you set the distances from your front left rear front right and your rears all in centimeters I use it because I do have time delay set up in my DSP. I don't use any of this stuff. So everything's just flat. So um, I will use this sometimes depending on the staging of the song. Uh, it'll add a little bit of an offset if I need it. But that's the only thing that I ever turn on on this thing. Uh, music. Course no chest kid. So the status bar is always there for your volume control. So I, I just hope that they can do the same thing for Z-Link. Uh, but yeah, because it is annoying. So this is, uh, yeah, the new drawing head unit. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions let me know all i could say is it's definitely an upgrade from the other ones and it's a very very cleaner upgrade and the screen resolution you'll notice it right away as soon as, as it turns on it might not be that much more resolution but the it's like you the old screen you're able to see little dots and in, in like the display but this one is like very 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 clear 
it actually makes a huge difference. I think the other one was uh, 1280 by 720. And this one's by 800. And that little bit difference of pixels make a huge difference. So give it a shot. You won't regret it. And it's also, also has its pros and benefits of a faster processor. Um, I'd like to touch base with some people here about the CAN bus. So when you buy the CAN bus from the joining units, you'll go into the factory, 3368 is the passcode, you'll enter here, your car model. This is where the CAN bus setup happens. So you open this and then this is the CAN box type. So you'll you'll have to fiddle around with it. You, like I, It took me, there's maybe about six different Chrysler ones between all these models. So it took me some time to find that BG was the vehicle I needed and other Chrysler and BG was the one that worked. So you'll just end up, you know, hitting one and then you'll try your steering wheel controls and see if they work. And then, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video and uh, like, subscribe, any questions, let me know. Thanks. So this is a test that we're going to do. It's this whole counter steel. This is the range. So it disconnected. Oh. Still playing, just the news. So still connected. I tried suffocating this phone. Still connected. Still connected. So the connectivity in this is really, really good. It's unreal. Does it prove to you? That's how well the signal works. That's the distance test for CarPlay, which is more than plenty. All right, so that pretty much sums up our review video for the Joying Head Unit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed our content. We tried to be as descriptive as possible for the RCAs, the high-level outputs, and then the digital coaxial and digital optical outputs. Um, as I said before, it's kind of sad that we still see 48 kilohertz of the output and not 96 kilohertz on the digital side. So I hope they can fix that uh, sample rate um, being outputted by the digital processing chip. Maybe it's just a setting that they need to switch in the back end to make that uh, 96 kilohertz of high res output. Um, other than that, this unit is flawless. I'd say if I had to compare it to the Intel unit, I would say it's um, double the speed. CarPlay is so much better on this unit. Uh, wireless connectivity just connects, it's bang on. It's, um, 
big difference in the Bluetooth chip. The screen is like HD. Uh, they went with the 16 by 10. So that's the 1280 by 800 resolution. All I can say is that I don't think you'd find anything else that would suit your needs somewhere else. Um, the only thing that we're lacking still is the output, uh, the RC output voltage. Could be bumped up to four volts. If they're really serious about being in the car audio business, I bet you if they did that, um, everything else would just, this would sell a lot more in the States. But they're already uh, ahead of the game by, providing output for digital coax and digital opticals so uh, they're already ahead of the game they'll, they're, they'll get there very soon the uh, more we make these videos the more they can help them understand because their language is not the same as ours um, so yeah bear with them they'll come out with technology ask for it comment below tell them what you think about it um, join reads in my my page feed all the comments that everybody puts in below um, they try to take all these comments put it together and we build a better product um, their engineer also posts my videos on his page so uh, i hope this helps everything their website is drawingauto.com and you can see there is a bunch of stuff available um, they have vehicle specific head units which they're pushing really hard for. They also have the ultra wide on an 8.8 .8 single din screen. I'm pretty sure that's buttonless as, as well. So there's many options. Go check it out, go, go get a visit, shoot them an email. They have great customer support. Um, I haven't had any problems with them. So give it a shot, give it a chance. Don't diss it until you try it. This is Steph with KNS Diesel. Hope you enjoyed our videos. Thank you.